As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Welcome to the Gangs of Hollywood podcast. Hey gang, welcome to episode 6. On this episode, I am joined by one of the funniest and most entertaining guys podcasting out of Scotland today, the man, the myth, the legend, Liam, I've still got tight pants, Rafferty. <laughs> How's it going? How are you? I'm, I'm good, mate. How about yourself? I'm not bad. All things considered, eh, I'm, I'm not too yeah. bad. Upright and moving forward, that's as good as it gets. Yeah, and it, it's as good as it'll get for a long time, so... Let's enjoy it. That's it. The option is everyone can now work without pants, and I'm all for that. <laughs> I'm always, always up for no pants working. Yeah. <laughs> so for for anyone that doesn't know you, and shame on them for not, can you give us uh, a bit of a rundown about who you are and what you're about, mate? Uh, I am Liam. I am from Glasgow, Scotland. That's away on the other side of the world. And uh, I am a co-host of the podcast Scott and Liam vs. Evil, uh, where originally we just get drunk and watch movies. Now as we get older and hangovers kick in and seriously kick your balls, uh, we don't drink as much. So conceivably the chat has then got better over time. Or worse. Are you suggesting it's become highbrow? Uh, and yeah. I want to refute that, mate, because oh. it hasn't. <laughs> yeah. There is no <laughs> chance I'll ever be a part of anything that is highbrow. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> Medi- oh, medium dear. brow. Medium brow. Yeah, yeah. Just, just casual brow. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine with that. <laughs> casual. Yeah. So, look, anyone uh, anyone that has not already gone on board, definitely go and listen to Scott and Liam versus Evil. It is awesome. Thank you. Now... Speaking of things that are awesome, we are going to discuss what is apparently a genre-defining movie that began an amazing series. It is, of course, 1970s Stray Cat Rock Delinquent Girl Boss. This 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 movie has so many things that I that I love, and I really can't wait to talk about it. Yeah, this is our first watch for me, and I was. Yeah, let's let's get into it. <laughs> let's get into it. So um, I'm now going to play the trailer. It is actually in Japanese. So enjoy your couple of minutes of Japanese. <laughs>
<laughs> this movie was directed by Yashura Hasabi, responsible for a number of classic Japanese gang movies like Massacre Gun in 1967, Savage Wolfpack in 1969, the female prisoner Scorpion 701's Grudge Song in 1973. They love a long title, don't they? Oh, they do. They absolutely they do. They love it. Love a long title. And he also did the rest of the Stray Cat series. Now, as mentioned, this movie does star Akiko Wada as Aiko. Um, now, she was obviously a, a pop singer of the time, quite popular. She really hasn't done a lot of stuff outside of Japan and the Stray Cat series. Uh, she does appear in 1987's Yakuza Ladies 2, which I will be watching at some point. And most fascinatingly, she was the voice of Marge Simpson in the Japanese version of the Simpsons movie. Really? That, yes. That is a fascinating fact. <laughs> That's just I, I I went to IMDb and I went what, what no that's weird and I like I actually checked other sources and legitimately she was the voice of Marge Simpson. My one takeaway from this episode is going to be that fact. I am going to relay that to so many people. That is that is honestly mind blown. <laughs> you can go watch this movie and then you can go see that see that chick the big tall chick. She's the voice of Marge Simpson. Oh, I can't believe that. That, that started my day off well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. It's, it's just weird facts. Now, uh, we're talking about Mei, Meiko Kaji. Uh, she's got 108 credits and over 50 years in the entertainment industry. Uh, she would be familiar with to anyone who's a fan of Japanese exploitation with films like Lady Snowblood, which you and I are very familiar with. Yes. Uh, the Female Prisoner series, which I know quite well. I'm not sure whether you've seen that one. Yep, I picked it up uh, over Christmas for uh, in, the, nice. in the adult sale. So, yeah, I get into that quite quickly. Well done. Yes, well, she, we will be seeing her again and possibly watching the Female Prisoner series with uh, Liam. And uh, Koji Wada as Michiko Yagami. This actor, is uh, he's played apparently gangsters his entire career. Uh, he has like 70 credits and every single one of them is a member of the Yakuza. So that's obviously Japanese typecasting for you. Um, I will be probably watching 1964's Gate of Flesh uh, with him in it, mostly because I just like the title. That sounds like just a full-on porn. <laughs> yeah, see? That, that's exactly where I went straight away. I know where the Gate of Flesh is. <laughs> yeah, that, that does not sound like a film I want to watch. <laughs> Oh, I think you do. I really think you do. Uh, what, what Liam thinks about that, I'm going to provide a little bit of a fact, and that is that movies uh, like this are referred to as sukuban, which means, in Japanese, delinquent girl or boss girl. Uh, the male equivalent is a bunch of. And uh, apparently the Dictionary of Japanese Slang says that a sukuban only refers to the leader of the girl gang, not any member of the girl gang. So that would make Ako the sukuban. Okay. <laughs> Word for today, kiddies, is sukuban. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to be educational, mate. I'm trying to like show that I've grown as a podcaster and I'm not just doing dick jokes. Well, you've already taught me that uh, this lassie was the voice in Marge Simpson, so I am... <laughs> you're, you're, you're educating me from the get-go. There you go. A giant Japanese woman um, was the voice of Marge Simpson. Uh, so there you go. And so, uh, obviously, this was also called Alley Cat Rock, Female Boss. And uh, was followed by a number of other ones. Uh, we've got Wildcat Rock, uh, Wild Jumbo, which is completely... I started to watch it and went, this has got nothing to do with gangs. Um, Sex Hunter, which I started to watch and went, might save that for another time. Machine Animal, which uh, was uh, very keen on the flesh. And uh, Crazy Riders from 1971, which I haven't watched as yet, but it is definitely on the list. I've, I've not watched any of the other ones yet, but I really, really fancy the Sex Hunter one for obvious reasons. Yeah. Well, look, straight away. Uh, Sex Hunter, I think it's probably not dissimilar from Gate of Flesh. Uh, <laughs> I just that, like saying that now. Oh, that was so arousing. That your your accent <laughs> at that deep with that sentence, that was, oh, that ticked all the boxes. <laughs> so it gave you a bit of a twitch. There you oh, go. Did. Speaking of ticket boxes, um, this was actually designed to compete with Toei's Delinquent Boss series, uh, which uh, was on basically running at the same time. Now, 
prior to uh, sitting down to have this recording, I actually did watch 1971's Delinquent Girl Boss, Worthless to Confess. Um, just as a bit of a comparison, much more nudity, like straight out of the box, just nudity and girls with clearly painted on tattoos on every part of their body. And I thought it was great. Um, I am there for it's more <laughs> As soon as, we, yeah. as, soon as this episode uh, is done, I'm there. Yep. Straight there. Um, and it's actually about a bunch of girls uh, straight out of a correctional school. <laughs> but uh, who take their revenge on a bunch of Yakuza. That's definitely worth a watch. Uh, it, like the last probably 20 minutes, it goes a bit bonkers and it's just full on violence and blood. And it's fantastic. So there you go. Jump on board that one as well. Um, interesting enough, both sets of films were actually inspired by Roger Corman's early outlaw biker film, The Wild Angels from 1966. And I can tell you that that film is awesome and I will be covering it down the track. No, no comment on that one, Liam. Not no, seen it. I'm, I'm Don't know at, it. I'm looking forward to it. I've not seen it. I've not seen it at all. Uh, my Roger oh, Corman uh, knowledge is all based on Ed, his Edgar Allan Poe adaptations. Ah, uh, right. Out with that, I'm, yeah, I'm no. not the biggest Corman fan. No, the, the, like no. the Wild Angels is an absolute classic. It is really, really worth watching. Um, if, like if you like that type of movie, of course. So, um, how, how is it? How is it? Did it <laughs> It's pretty good. It, it's Corman level nudity. It's it definitely is, Corman level nudity. Is it as good as Gate of Flesh like? and that uh, mm. other delinquent boss? Uh, it? <laughs> uh, oh, look, it's different. Now, look, there's not as many painted on tattoos. Uh, mm. The the tattoos look more real in <laughs> in the Corman <laughs> one because there's a good chance that he just went, yeah, you look rough and ready. You're in. Um, how do you feel about taking your top off? You're okay. Great. You <laughs> you can work for two days. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely worth jumping on board for that one. Yeah. Um, so you know, listen, there's a there's a whole lot of other like really arty farty facts about this, and I'm not even going to talk about them because. That's not the kind of show that I do. Um, this was apparently very low budget, um, but it wanted to. The director wanted it to feel like the '60s uh, hippie type freak out movies, and uh, from the US. And there's definitely a few scenes that have um, that feel to them. And I'm sure we'll talk about those down the track. So, shall we talk about the movie itself, mate? Yes, of course. Of course. So, uh, we begin the movie with tough girl biker Aiko, as I mentioned, a pop singer Akiko Wada, uh, getting rear-ended on her bike, which I've I've ridden a bike for a number of years. I've never been rear-ended by anyone. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've been sideswiped. I've never been rear-ended by anyone on my bike, let alone someone in... I, did it, was it, it was a dune buggy, right? Oh, it was <laughs> That's a, what it looked it, like. Oh, it was a, definitely a dune buggy. And it would have did way more damage to that bike than it actually yeah. did in the film yeah because it was just like boom and it's like no crack light no nothing and i mean those dune buggies the bodies on those are usually just fiberglass right? also, the, uh, like they'll just the engine must be totally silent because they that was a, a a large group of guys and they crept up on her without knowing from they, three miles they, away they, <laughs> they did they snuck up out of nowhere just maybe, maybe that was just a rolling stop it's just like <laughs> boom. Just, just like okay um and th- that in itself is like man you see her get off the bike and until she takes off the helmet you think it's a bloke and then you go by jingo she's a big tall japanese woman who clearly just wants to fight <laughs> And wearing the double denim too. Double denim, bit of a Canadian tuxedo. Is that what they call it? <laughs> yes. The, the, the jacket and pants, the jacket and jeans, that's a Canadian tuxedo. Oh, see, I, I, I never used to go denim on denim. I would always stay away from it. But yeah. see, recently I, I've, be, I've been bringing it back. And do you know what? I'm okay with it. I'm okay with, I'm okay yeah. with all outfits in this film. They are fabulous. Oh, they are. <laughs> and... and <laughs> And, and you know, before we go to talking about outfits, I love how you know we've we've got mobsters that are apparently right wing, like potential Nazis, all in uniforms. Um, the the guy gang all wear all dressed the same. I, I noticed they've all got the same pants, t shirt, and a black shirt with like a print on it. It was looking very stylish. <laughs> it's uh, and, and it's so cheaper when you buy your uniforms as wholesale. So that makes yeah, that, that makes sense. Exactly it. it makes sense financially for the gang. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's good. And, and you know what? Motorcycle gangs are all about good, good financial sense. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, she chases them across the city as we as we get the the titles run through, and uh, we get a quick flash up that says, uh, I think it was pink or red that said Saturday noon, and I went, that's not good if you've got epilepsy because oh. it just like <laughs> on the screen was completely unprepared for that. Yeah, by Sunday afternoon you are dead if you're epileptic. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's it. Because there's a lot of those flashing up. Um, Aiko goes, gets petrol, which apparently takes two guys to put petrol in a, in a motorbike in Japan, which I didn't understand, but nonetheless. Um, and then has a strange girl jump on the back of her bike. She subsequently dumps her off, then jumps back on, and she begs her to take her where she, wherever she wants to go, and she'll introduce her to some hot girls. And automatically I'm going, okay, <laughs> pretty sure I know where this is going. Um, she drops her off in what appears to be a, a building site or something. I don't know, I couldn't work that out. Uh, and she catches up with her gang, one of whom is huffing paint. <laughs> well, Did I, you see that? I actually, I missed that. Did you? Like, when they first ride up, one of them's holding a bag full of, like, stuff, and, like, she tells her off, tells her to... Uh, I think she says, stop chroming or something, but she was huffing paint. Well, I suppose nothing would get you ready for a fight quite like the smell of white jul- yeah. julux. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, sure. Why not? <laughs> you know, it may- maybe if you don't want to feel the knife go in, you know. But- yeah. A couple least, of litres of Dulux and just get get on. Yeah, it would set you off your head, man. You would be like a rabid dog running in there, just high on paint fumes. <laughs> Maybe this is what the army should start doing. Just start whiffing paint. <laughs> That's it. To, to hand. Well, you know what? If we've learnt nothing from, from Mad Max 4, apparently Chrome, ooh, it's on. <laughs> Uh, that's another movie we'll have to talk about at a different time. Um, so the the girls then go into a fight, and there's lots of lots of knives and and razors, razors in the fist with a bit of a face slash. Yeah, that uh, fight I escalated. Like that. I that, was pretty good. that fight escalated quickly, man. Like it did. It was just like, oh, what are you looking at right here? Now I've got blades in my hands, and I'm going to swipe you with them. Like, whoa, yeah, come on. I'm sure he's going to talk about this. That's right. We're, we're going to talk about went from one on one to just <laughs> <laughs> budget Wolverine hands, uh, and then you know it's knives out. There's chasing. There's running. There's everything else. Um, all with a lovely funky jazz '60s beat over the top, so you know that everyone's having a great time. Um, <laughs> Uh, Aiko obviously watches the, the girls fight because maybe she enjoys that sort of stuff and uh, as as the girls head into I think it was under a bridge their boyfriends turn up who just happened to be the gang that ran into Aiko earlier and uh, Aiko decides to save the day uh, and joins in turns the tide gets May on the back of her bike and as I said at that point in time automatically becomes the leader of the gang yeah I like that progress yes. she, she's earned it yeah yeah, she, she's gone from courier to boss. Yeah. <laughs> Straight away. So uh, remember, kids, the word you're looking for here is Sukoban. Um... <laughs> We cut straight to a, well, I want to say a 60s psychedelic club where a hippie band sings in English. Miki, do you call? Miki, do you call? Did that to you? I thought I'm not 
how good is Did that? you listen to the words of that? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's how, so good. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. Like, every time they, it would cut to the, the music scenes, I was like, I love this. I genuinely love this so much. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with the plot. It's got nothing to do with anything other than, the- uh, here, here's three minutes of 60s funk. <laughs> For no reason, and you know, like it's got sliding angles and in and out, and everyone's dancing, and it's so fun. I had the best fun with uh, with the club scenes. And look, I'm not going to lie; those are my favourite scenes for this entire movie. Yeah, I, I I would fully agree with that. They were just so much fun and just so reminiscent of the time. Like when you watched it, you knew exactly yeah. when this was, and you could just roll yeah. with it. Yeah, and just enjoy it. Um, we we see uh, we see that the girls apparently really like Aiko and uh, seem to be quite happy to want to dance with her, although having earlier confused her for a man, um, which doesn't seem to bother her at all. She's quite happy with who she is and what she's about. Um, this is the point in the movie where things get a bit weird because we find out that May's boyfriend, Michiko, um, wants to join a right-wing nationalist group. Uh, who I look, I just thought they were gangsters with a flag and uniforms. Yeah, no, I got the right wing thing. I think that's <laughs> that, yeah, that, that's that's right. <laughs> look, the first time I watched this, I wasn't really paying attention to the subtitles. I have to tell the truth. Um, I was more just watching the movie, and and, and then like I said, when I watched it just before recording, it's just like, oh no, it does say that they're right wing, right wing people with a, a a uniform and a flag. Um, who are still criminals though? <laughs> yeah. Like, at no point should we be empathising with this guy who really, really just wants to join them. Like, come on, please help me. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please help me. I, yeah, I, I want to join the alt-right. <laughs> no, you don't. You're an idiot. <laughs> you are an idiot. Um, and apparently, in order to, to, uh, to join, he's actually going to get his uh, lifelong friend, Kelly, played by Ken Sanders. Now... Was he African American, or at least partially African American? I, I honestly, was that what you got from that? Yeah, I, I couldn't. I couldn't tell. At, at first, I thought he was fully American, and then his Japanese was way too good, and I was like, "Oh, I'm, oh. I'm so confused." <laughs> Me too. I was just looking at him, going, "Okay, you, you look like that, but you sound like, like you say, his Japanese was flawless." Yeah. So it was just like, who knows? Maybe, look, I I don't want to cast aspersions, but maybe he was a bit of a uh, World War II baby, if you know what I'm saying. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Don't want to cast aspersions on on Ken Sanders, but uh, those things happened all over the world. These things, you know. Anyway, but moving on from from that, which is potentially not great, um, and you know the, he wants wants him to throw the match, throw the boxing, so obviously the group can uh, win on the bets and get everything done. Uh, once we get through that, we cut back to another club scene where Aiko was singing in English again. <laughs> What was it? I'm a boy, yeah, a girl? I know. I did not know what was going on there. I, I love the tune, but yeah, what was happening? <laughs> yeah, again, just, just great to just look at it and go, I don't understand. <laughs> don't understand. 
Oh, so much fun. Um, apparently, uh, Mickey, who's a member of the group, turns up after being attacked by their rivals and uh, that one and tells them that one of the other girls has, has been held hostage and uh, Aiko convinces them to go and uh, get her back. So they magically appear at the other gang's hideout where they're all partying and having lunch uh, and sex. <laughs> All, they're, all, they're good, all, bu- <laughs> all the things of a good party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, when, when when I go to a wild sex party, I want to see people eating like cauliflower and broccoli and uh, you know other things that are healthy. <laughs> is that what, <laughs> is that what you have for your lunch? What cauliflower and bro- broccoli? Yeah, yeah. That's a, bro- that's, I have that, bacon. That's a terrible lunch. I'm, 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 no, it's I'm, really good. Just just broccoli and cauliflower. No, and bacon. And that's that's weird, man. <laughs> that's weird. No, that. it's really good, bro. Uh, no, no, no. Especially if people are having sex behind you, and that's what you choose to eat. If people are having sex at my party, oh, yeah. I'm eating steak, man. I'm eating or a burger, <laughs> like broccoli and corn. So, something with plenty of protein. <laughs> oh, no, of course. Was, look, the, the, there was at least three different people eating celery sticks. <laughs> oh, Phil. In the, in that scene. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, broccoli and cauliflower are pretty normal. All right. Look, and, and my sex party lunch is completely different to my normal lunch. Oh, well, that makes sense. There's a, <laughs> yes, yes. There's a lot of sausages and and, um, and Lucozade. <laughs> got to, you've got to keep your stamina up. Uh, of course, keep those glucose levels high. <laughs> you do. you got to, you got to keep your energy going. M- moving on from what we do at our sex parties. Um, they... <laughs> <laughs> they then reveal, you know, the girl that's been uh, been captured, and they torture her with a blowtorch. See, for how which I thought was a bit full on. It, yeah, like I've burnt myself a few times, and see, watching that, I could feel that burn happening, and it wasn't even that yeah. impressive an effect. But my no. god, blowtorch to the chest—that's a horrible part. Yes. That's almost as bad as eating cauliflower and broccoli for your lunch. <laughs> almost during a sex party. During a almost. sex party. <laughs> Almost as big a faux pas. Yeah, look, and they don't hold back. Like, you you looking at her chest just going, oh, nah. I mean, I, I, I was literally rubbing my chest in that spot where they were burning and just going, it just doesn't seem right. Like, <laughs> yeah. just, it, it was not good. Um, so, obviously, you know, they, they break in. There's a fight. Um, and, you know, they, they manage to beat the men and the women alike and free their friend. Hooray! Um... This is the point where we find out that the gang, uh, both the male and female gang, are affiliated with the right right wingers, who they call black shirts. And I'm going, yeah, again, alt right. Yeah. This is not. None of this is good. If you in this environment, our current environment, these are ultimately the bad guys. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then then we go through, they leave, there's a bit of a standoff, uh, and the head of the Black Shirts tells the gang leader he needs to guard Kelly, the boxer, until the fight to ensure that he loses. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Which seems quite strange, uh, because how, how can you guarantee that before the fight? Well, short of taking someone hostage, you can't, yeah. really. But like you know. he, 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 he has to go and fight, so there's no point in sitting with him. Just let him do what he wants. He has to go to the ring, so you know you, you better off finding a member of his family and holding them at gunpoint. Yeah. That'll definitely you know that'll that'll sway him. Not just you know he he's apparently childhood friend because <laughs> you know what you, fuck my childhood friend. <laughs> I see you've did this before. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, I can't say too much. <laughs> can't say, say too much, but I have had a little bit of experience with fixing fights. Sure, they were between three-year-olds, but that's not the point. <laughs> Those are the only fights I want to watch. <laughs> yes, just yes, yes, kitty fights on cocaine. It's hilarious. Um, moving on from that. <laughs> that's an excellent name of a, of a future film. I think we should be making. Yes, kitty Kit- fights on cocaine. <laughs> There, and there could easily be five sequels. Kitty fights on cocaine. Yes. Five. Yes. I can't think of it. Actually, uh, I think if it's Kitty fights on cocaine, fine. Of cocaine five, it should be subtitled the Ketamine Wars. Oh, excellent, excellent man. Yes. So, look, anyone that wants to reach out to us and get that done, feel free. <laughs> we're here. Um. <laughs> so, uh, quick, quick flash of pink, and we're now at Saturday night. And uh, we know it's Saturday night because the girls are out on the town, walking around and bumping into people and just randomly beating them up. <laughs> and yet they're meant to be the good guys. And they're just, yeah, they're just no. kidnapping people and just stealing money from innocents. Yeah. 
just, uh, the, I like how they just find one guy, he bumps into them, and this is like, no, fuck you, buddy. We're going to drag you into the alley, <laughs> beat you up, steal your money. But remember, we're the good guys. <laughs> and it's it's all the more uh, embarrassing that just after they rob him, they'll then go back and they'll sing karaoke again for ages. <laughs> it's like, yeah, oh, that's right. if you're going to batter me, make sure you're actually living a life of hard crime, not karaoke and, and just beating me up in between songs. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know, we're just gonna have a bit of fun. Yeah. All right. You can't you can't be like a hardcore criminal all the time. All right. You've you, you've got to go and sing songs in English that make no sense. <laughs> um, uh, as it turns out, May and the girls go to visit Kelly before the fight, and of course, it turns out that Aiko is a fan of Kelly and tells him she wants a long fight with plenty of violence. You're not going to argue with her. I, I mean, she no, she was taller than Kelly. Yeah. She she could probably she yeah she could have killed Kelly. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Just definitely give him a quick one too. And you know, again, at that point, I wouldn't have argued with her. I would have said, no, that's fine. I'll win. Yeah. Whatever you say, large lady, <laughs> I will win the fight. Um, so we get a obviously standard set of, uh, of boxing scenes, you know, crowd shots, punching shots, um, pictures of the gang and Aiko and, and, and Michiko, uh, all with, of course, some lovely 60s funk over the top. Um, and now I like how, like, Aiko was apparently the only voice that Kelly can hear in the entire crowd yelling at him that she's disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> just go, and she gets so annoyed that she can actually go down to ringside. No one stops her, and, and she can yell at him while he's on the mat. Yeah, the, for being such an important fight that the yakuza want to fix, or this gang want to fix, the the security in that arena is very, very rubbish. <laughs> yes, it's very lax. Yes. It's very, very Severely. lax. It's just like. Eh. Yeah, no, everyone, feel free to go right down to ringside and, and yell at him while he's on the mat. And apparently, um, you know, the yelling while he's there, like, bleeding and pretending to, like, not die, um, means that he will get up automatically and uh, he will then uh, win the fight. Yeah. Just, yay! <laughs> For no apparent reason. Just, that's all it took. Just some strange woman who he's never met before. <laughs> just say, I'm your biggest fan and you better win or I'll hurt you. Um, <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So unfortunately for uh, for Maya's boyfriend Michiko, uh, he's with obviously the the right wingers, and they drag him out uh, and express their displeasure by beating him absolutely bloody with kendo sticks and lumps of wood. Yeah, which surely yeah. Uh, and it's I, just I can't, like I'm way more effective than a kendo stick. Yeah. Oh, uh, then again, have you ever been hit with a bamboo kendo stick? No. It fucking hurts. Really. I've got one. The wrestlers do it all the time and it doesn't look that painful. No, no, trust me. (laughs) Swung with with a bit of force, it really hurts. Really? Right, well. Yeah, yeah. Bamboo bamboo while it bends is not forgiving on human flesh. I have a whole new respect for uh, professional wrestling. (laughs) Yes. Well, look, all you've got to do is look at Mick Foley and go, yeah, whole new respect for just big fat guys that are willing to jump off the second story onto tables full yeah. of thumbtacks I've all, and get up. I've always got respect for those, the old guys. But the new guys, yeah. I was like, I don't, I don't, would... yeah, I don't, I don't think you're getting hurt with anything. Like, kendo sticks don't look painful. But I'm saying that from a point of view when I have never, ever, ever been hit by bamboo. <laughs> so, uh, there you go. That's not a challenge yes, to you, anyone you need... listening. I don't want to be hit by bamboo. Yeah, no, I, I, actually, Scott, if you're listening, this is your opportunity to pay him back. Oh, I, uh, I, yeah, I would bar Scott. He knows that. <laughs> 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 oh dear shots fired once more <laughs> um so yeah you know, obviously the, yeah, they, they beat him up and um the girls come to save him which of course they do they manage to rescue him and the uh the leader of well the leader that we've met so far of the right wingers gets a big cut across his face so he has a super villain scar i've always wanted and it's just like okay a super villain scar like i see I've, I've always wanted um like you know a, a baron von richthofen scar that like just slightly pulls your eye down oh yeah and it goes down your cheek like a fencing scar i reckon that'd be kind of cool not that i'm encouraging anyone to stab me in the face all right <laughs> just no <laughs> just just saying it right now just in case anyone wants to help no i'm good <laughs> <laughs> Everyone at home has just slowly put their knives down. Like, well, since he told me not to, yeah, just, I'll give them more yeah, time. They, they, they're getting up, going, looking up my contact details on their phone, going, oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> more worried about my kids than anybody else. Um, so, 
You never can tell, mate. You never can tell. Uh, during the fight, we cut to um, the city and the girls are hiding out. Um, you know, there's a bit of running and back and forth and all that sort of stuff, which is pretty good. Um, they There's a scene where they hide in the bushes um, <laughs> when two of the gang members turn up. Now, I'm going to let you tell the people at home what those two men were doing. I don't even remember which part you're talking about. <laughs> So it, they, it's when they originally run out of the building and then they, 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 they run towards the train station and they jump in the bushes and like two of the guys in the gangs turn up and, um, and they walk off their bikes towards the bushes and I'm going to be quite honest, they have a slash right in front of them. <laughs> I, th- I also don't remember And it's that. just like, what? <laughs> it happened. Believe me, it happened. <laughs> I was there. It happened. I'd really question uh, my ability to, to pay full attention to a film because I, I have no recollection of that at all. I hope I've watched it. Go back to like. <laughs> oh, you have. You have. Go, go back around the 45 minute mark. You'll see it. I believe Guaranteed. you. I believe you. Uh, so anyway Aiko pushes them to keep moving with more 60s funk over the top there's a whole lot of again as I said cat and mouse rival gangs chasing them across the city Uh, and speaking of rival gangs if you want to um, if you want to watch a movie about rival gangs being chased across the city go back and listen to episode one of this show about the warriors and then watch that movie because that is freaking awesome (laughs) I'm going to do that that actually sounds so good (laughs) Have you not seen The Warriors? Well, no, I've seen The Warriors. I actually watched that a few nights ago, but go back and think think of that while watching yeah. it. Yeah, that's sounds See, fun. Line them up. That sounds like fun. Um, we then cut to Kelly in an empty gym, and the gang boss obviously questions him about Michiko because they're all looking for him, and that sort of goes nowhere. And guess what? We're back in the club, and now it's time for another classic song, but this time in Japanese. Yeah, the girls do not pay attention to the matter at hand, do they? Like, there's, there's no. a lot of serious shit happening outside these doors. Just stop singing for two minutes. Stop singing. Yeah, no, don't care. No, that's right. As soon as you get into that club, everything else stops. I suppose that you sing, that, that'd you be dance, good, you that'd be a good club to go to. Then you forget, leave yeah. leave all your problems at the door, even if they are being chased by a right wing gang of killers. Just leave it at the door. Yes. See, that would have been a much better theme to choose. <laughs> I imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, none of this chasing the, the world away, giving everything you got. Just walk inside and forget about the killers chasing you. Yeah, and just Cheers. every so often, just at the back window, you just see a Nazi walking back and forth, still waiting, waiting on <laughs> uh, Norm inside the, inside the pub. <laughs> <laughs> just, just pointing at him through the window. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get you, Norm. We're going to get you. <laughs> Can I get you? Um, so, you know, they, they do, they cut back to the, they have a bit of dancing. And you know, again, they're looking for the gang. I like how the gang just turn up. Uh, uh, they're looking for them and then just leave. This is like, oh, no, uh, there's clearly too many people here. You really don't give a shit. We're going to leave. And like, we'll just wait outside, as we mentioned. <laughs> so, um, for no apparent reason. I know. Uh, and the band keeps on singing. The band doesn't stop for anybody. All, they don't All the signs of an excellent band. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, we get back to the hideout with uh, Aiko and Mari and, and May and, and Michiko. And Aiko decides that she needs to go to get a bike and that Mari needs to go and get food. Uh, for Even though like, they're trying to hide. But no, no, we'll go out in the city and you know do the regular stuff. And that says a lot of people right now. Stay the fuck home, folks. All right? <laughs> Pay attention. If you go out, you're going to get picked up by random gangs and tortured. Oh. Or or get COVID. I don't know. I held my chest there because I was thinking of someone burning me with a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> Just tweaking my nipples thinking, oh no, the pain. <laughs> yes, the thing was you were tweaking your nipples going, oh no. <laughs> oh. oh don't don't do that. <laughs> bring out bring out the cauli- no, no. bring out the cauliflower and cabbage it's lunchtime. <laughs> And don't forget to finish it off with a nice stick of celery. <laughs> That'll keep your energy up. Uh, so to, I, I believe that uh, uh, celery is nature's rectal toothbrush. Um, that's a good, that's a, a learnt, good way to describe it. Yeah, well, I, I learned that from from a '60s commercial that showed a man with a toothbrush up his butt. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what it was about. Anyway, there were pictures of uh, yeah. Anyway, moving on from <laughs> stuff I see on the internet. Uh, as it turns out, uh, like I said, Mari gets picked up. Uh, Aiko comes back, and rather than worry about Mari, she does a little bit of window shopping, and then just rides her bike. <laughs> Right, she's obviously never ever ridden a motorbike because see the way she moves 
with uh, with those handlebars, yep. she would be off at the first corner. It is, yes, it's <laughs> absolutely insane that you're meant to believe that she is upright on a bike. Yeah, yeah, she's not. She's, she's not, the the wheels turning left. She's she's leaning left and then leaning right and spinning. It's yeah. Look, I'm glad you pointed it out because part of me was just going. Oh, that, and there were bits where I'm just going. It's driving me crazy. It's just driving me crazy. But we're, we're saved saved from from wondering about how the hell she's managing to stay upright. But her taking a little break and singing what I could only think of as the Japanese version of "Stand by Your Man." <laughs> I didn't even think of that, but yeah, that, that's that's pretty on point. <laughs> yeah, just, I was re- I was reading the subtitles to it. Like it was the only song that we get subtitles to, and I've got this is like it's Japanese "Stand by Your Man," <laughs> <laughs> which that's which sad. literally has nothing to do with what's going on in the film. <laughs> nothing. No, nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. Stand by but your far right. No one cares. Yeah, stand by your far right <laughs> boxing match fixing boyfriend. Yes, he's clearly an idiot. Oh, just <laughs> really. Um, we get back to headquarters and uh, we we find out that uh, while this has happened, Mari has been tortured by the right wingers at the headquarters, and they now know where the friends are. That, of course, leads to Flash Sunday morning. And again, by now, I'm starting to twitch with those flashes that are hurting my brain. I know. Um, this is where we get to see more of the gang with the June buggy and their motorbikes sneaking through the town. <laughs> Going flat, just going flat out, making as much noise. And, and the now uh, head bandaged leader of the alt right with a shotgun. <laughs> do, do you think they actually closed the streets off to film this? Because there's one scene where the June buggy tears up the centre of like a, a shopping precinct, and the people are looking at the camera yes. as if like that this happens all the time. But why are you filming it? <laughs> It's such a it's such a blase <laughs> look back. Like, oh, oh, well, there's a guy with a shotgun and a June buggy. Did, yeah, that's no, right. It's like, oh, hey, look, it must be Saturday. On Sunday morning, he's out walking his shotgun with his June buggy. It's just, I, I reckon they must have closed the streets for a lot of these things because there's just there's a bunch of just weird stuff that happens in the in the chase montage um, that that we get a little bit later on. Um, so obviously, you know, they're rumbling through town. Uh, Mari, for some unknown reason, manages to find Kelly uh, just magically. <laughs> <laughs> and they head back to the club where of course everyone is still there despite the fact that it's Sunday morning um, and we're just going to get a little bit of a little bit more 60s jazz which is exactly what I want on a Sunday morning <laughs> yeah 60s jazz that's that's what you need yeah I don't need coffee I just need 60s jazz <laughs> um, now this is the point where uh, the gang obviously find um, Aiko and, and, and May and, and Michiko and you know we, we get uh, a very quick montage of motorbikes going over very small jumps and, and going through the dirt <laughs> which I'm just going really that's just fucking sad um <laughs> And the gang busts in in their matching outfits, which is like really obvious now, and uh, yeah, enter the hideout. So there's a fight. Michiko gets shot. Like it's the first time you see like a, a gun in this whole movie, and it's the only gun you see in the whole movie, actually. Uh, but of course, he gets shot in slow mo just to make it super effective, and it works. And I, then I, I felt like it does. Shot. Well, I just felt like going, yeah, got what he deserved. I reckon. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> May, May then obviously you know, in her grief and craziness attacks the gang with a bar forgetting completely that one of the guys has got a shotgun uh, uh, there's a bit of a scuffle and they manage to escape on Aiko's bike uh, we then get some obviously riding montage more of bikes jumping over little little jumps and falling down for no reason like the guys going on the train tracks they like just go duh, 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 duh. oh I fell over yeah. it's, just like, oh, it's evident that no one in those scenes has actually ever ridden a bike like th- th- those no. guys are driving those bikes the way I would drive a bike all over the place <laughs> and crash instantly Oh, it's just, it, it's just, no one in their right mind rides along like the middle of a, ra- a train line. It is just stupid. <laughs> you, you will, you will fucking die. And these guys fall over, which is great. Um, now, of course, that means that everything is uh, then brought down to to just Aiko and, and the gang boss in his June buggy. And this is this is the bit you mentioned that they go down a subway, like down the down the stairs through a whole underground shopping center. I think, and, and like I said, the people are just like, yeah, okay. 
no one stops no one jumps out of the way it's just like yeah, okay and they go it's it's bonkers <laughs> i suppose you probably wouldn't want to get involved you'd maybe be like right shit has really hit the fan over there that is that is <laughs> it too intense and too crazy for me to even comprehend right now so i'm just going to walk by pretend i've not seen it and just go on with my normal life i can actually understand that outlook <laughs> Yeah, that's a real commitment to not giving a shit, though. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I'm quite good at that. So, yeah, that would be my outlook. Just, if you look, they're going to involve you. You're going to have to give a statement. You're going to have to start fingering some perps. Like, no, that's it. Just yeah. just walk away. It didn't happen. Yeah, didn't see a thing. Yeah. <laughs> didn't see a thing. Oh, I think that's a good policy to have. Um, now, again, you know, Aiko goes up the stairs. They go across a bridge, like a pedestrian bridge. They go um, under a bridge. They go through a parking lot. They go into a tunnel where they go in and out of the pylons. And I'm just looking at that big gun. Surely you're just going to like drive straight. <laughs> Just to look, but now you go around one pile and a hook in the other. Something that whole bit was like, what? It's like a little Scooby Doo where they're running between doors. Yeah. And like, they, <laughs> then somebody else is at the front and somebody else is at the back and they're switching places. <laughs> <laughs> It's just oh, it was so weird. Uh, eventually, uh, Aiko goes down a set of stairs, and the June buggy smashes in- into something. And like this is this went on for like five minutes. Yeah. And but I like it that the boss just like laughs and just goes oh, and just leaves the June buggy like jammed halfway up the stairs. <laughs> just ah, whatever. Just gonna walk away from that. Just go. Wasn't me. <laughs> Just wasn't me. Yeah, like, oh, how so how many weird. how many people own June buggies in this town that you can walk away from it and nobody will say, Well, that guy over there used to own a June buggy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. It was very similar to that one. Uh now it's jammed in the stairs, yeah. That's just I don't know. <laughs> Again, no one cares. No one wants to get involved. <laughs> Uh, we we go we go back to uh, to the club and of course we're back singing and dancing and everyone's happy to see Aiko uh, until the right wingers arrive and just sit outside as you mentioned because apparently that uh, that club it's the safest place it could ever be uh, and then we get a red flash and we learn that it is indeed Sunday night um, and I like how like the passage of time means that everyone's just like just sitting down and looking a bit sort of tired. <laughs> Because we've been in the club. Look, some of those people have been in the club for two days now. Yeah. Non-stop. Like, can you imagine what you would be like after being in a club for two days? I'd, oh, I'd be fucking climbing the walls. I'd, I'd be dead. I would be I would be stone cold dead. I would have died on a Friday night. <laughs> and I'd just be lying there. <laughs> the hangover see, would have I, I, I reckon me it, instantly. Yeah. See, that, see I, I reckon I would have got drunk, passed out, just like drunk to the point that I couldn't even move, passed out. Someone's woken me up. I've got a hangover, and my first reaction is to break a bottle and stab him. <laughs> and just fuck off. Just, 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 that that that's the level of hangover I reckon I'd end up with without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, so you know they're all sitting around, they're, they're talking to each other, um, and they make their escape out of the back of the club, which is a very good trick. But apparently that required a lot of crouching and going under things, which I didn't really understand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they sort of get out the back. They they disappear. And um, then we, we cut to the big boss of the right wingers meeting with the, uh, the sub boss who got the eye slash and the gang boss telling him that he's very disappointed and that they need to redeem themselves. <laughs> It's it's all very polite, but obviously uh, hard hitting. Apparently, <laughs> so hard hitting. Did I, that whole bit was was uh, just there going what? <laughs> See, if this was a proper gangster movie, he would have knifed these guys or like made them cut off a <laughs> finger or something. <laughs> he's, he's literally walked in and be like, right, stop chasing the wee lassies. Just leave them alone. Yep. Stop hanging about the club. We've got bigger things to do. We're we're like a proper gang. Just stop doing it until I come back and get you. And that guy cannot handle it. He's like, no, no man. He, he he just he just loses it. He he's gone. You know, I got my ice guard for this. For, you know, for for you right wing Nazi motherfuckers. <laughs> And just, he loses it. And I look at the gang boss, just starts laughing his head off and then gets shot in the face for his trouble. And that is the only scene in this film that he's not smoking a cigar because he's dead. Yes. <laughs> yes. He's just going, he stumbles, he gets up and stumbles. How do you try to pick up a cigar and try and smoke it as he was stumbling? <laughs> I would have given him extra points. Oh yeah. That would be a great death. Yeah. Well and truly a great death. Um... So we we get that all, all obviously happening. Um, Aiko confronts um, 
you know, the an injured right winger, only to have May stop her. And so this is where we like we get the final standoff um, with with you know the the boss that got his eye eye cut. Aiko again magically just turns up and May's like right behind him. They get into a fight. May stabs him like full on stabs him. Um, then there's like this three way tussle, and of course May gets stabbed fatally, and she dies. Dun, dun, dun. I, that could have been although the stab that like she gives to the the guy was pretty lame it was just like a bit of a dig you know now you're from scotland mate you know you know how people get stabbed properly oh right? yeah it should have been multiple times just up under the rib cage yeah. just a couple of little pierce there maybe do it in the thigh yeah. Yeah. Mm, if you do it yeah. if you do it mate, in the mate, ass, you can't you can't get charged for it uh, uh, is that right yeah that used to be an, <laughs> an urban legend in scotland that as long as you stab somebody in the arse then uh, they couldn't press charges. I have no idea why that was a thing or why anyone was worried about that. Like, okay, well, if I ever have to stab someone, as long as I do it there, I'll get away with it. That's just Glasgow, man. I stabbed them <laughs> in the ass. Yeah. Uh, part of me wants to know about that. Part of me doesn't, <laughs> because I think if I Google it, I'm going to see a lot of pictures of things that I don't want to see. <laughs> just go, the Glasgow ar- arse stabbings of 1994. <laughs> <laughs> So our stabbing spree. Yeah, it was that. Was Let's go lock down. It was a violent time. We should talk about. It. We should go yeah. back. Don't, don't revisit that torture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get we get a pig flash to Monday morning, and um, the movie ends with obviously uh, Aiko deciding to leave the city as they play one of her own tracks over the top, <laughs> and that's that's how it ends. Wait. And there's just. What? Yeah, so go on. I was gonna say I'm I'm okay with that ending. After after the yeah. madness of the last ten minutes, I'm okay that she just rides off into the sunset. <laughs> she she just says fuck this shit. I'm out. I'm out. I'm, t- I'm taking my giant uh, <laughs> Japanese woman body and leaving. And that's the sm- she should have done that a lot earlier. Oh yeah. You know if she'd done that right at the start, watch the fight, and then go. You know what? Fuck this. I'm out. She would have been a lot better off. Yeah, that first fight, if I pulled up and straight away those women had blades in between their fingers, I'd be like, no nah, man, this shit is not for me. I'm going, <laughs> yeah, I'm going no. back home. I'll, I'll, I'll go, yeah, I've got better things to do. <laughs> I might go to that club where everybody seems to like just sing and dance the whole time and never leave. <laughs> that looks like fun. <laughs> yes, just stay there. Don't leave. Don't, don't go and fight gangs. Just stay there singing all weekend. Yeah, that's right. Singing, singing in languages that you don't know. It'll be great. <laughs> All right. I've already said it. Like, so those club scenes are my absolute favourite uh, in this movie. Only for the fact of the way that they sing their songs they are. Like, even the dude that gives it a bit of acoustic guitar country um, at, on the Sunday morning, whatever it is, even that was worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I fully agree. Those scenes are just, they're so much fun. Like, it's, it, you, yeah. you can't watch them without a smile on your face. Because yeah, it, 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 there's that confused smile on your face. It's like, this is great. I don't know why, but it's great. <laughs> yeah, it has literally nothing to do with the plot, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's right. I'm okay with it. It is fucking great. Um, in terms of leader of the pack or standout for this movie, uh, look, for me, it has to be Aiko. Uh, because, it, look, it's her story. Um, there's Other than the fact that the boyfriend, who really just should have died very early on, uh, Aiko, I absolutely loved her because she is against everything that you see in every other Japanese movie. Like, you never see a big, powerful Japanese woman. Yeah. She is an absolute standout. Yeah. And her singing is beautiful. It is, because I'm a boy, yeah, a girl, I'm a boy, yeah, a girl. <laughs> Watching. Uh, it is just, it's memorable. Well, it stuck with me, absolutely stuck with me. Uh, in, terms, in terms of rating, what do you give this one, mate? I would give it a, a 3.5 out of 5. Oh, we are absolutely matching 3.5 oh, yeah. out of 5. <laughs> if it had had nudity, I would have pushed it up to a 4. Yeah, if there was a little bit more violence... Then, uh, yeah, I think yeah. I would be on a four as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice to see that we, we fall on either side of that. I want more more boobs, you want more violence. That's great. It's, it's, a good, it's a good matching set. Put them together, you probably get a 4.5. All right, before we close out, would you like to tell folks where they can find Scott and Liam vs. Evil? Uh, you can find it over at www.scottandliamvsevil.com. Everything is there, or it should be. Then there'll be links to episodes and t-shirts and whatever else is up there yeah, and yeah come and check us out unless you haven't understood a word I've said throughout this entire thing because I have a habit of speaking fast yeah, then don't come over because you won't understand it over there either 
Mate, if they can understand the, the way I crap on, they can understand <laughs> absolutely anything. Then good. I'll come over. I'll come over Aura. and join us. Yeah. Yes, go and join Scott Lamb vs. Evil. I'm there. So are lots of other people. And it's a great time. All right. Coming up on the next episode in two weeks, we're going from motorcycles to an unending battle in a tower block with another special guest. Talking about 2011's The Raid. Have you seen The Raid, mate? Yeah, I love The Raid. It's, it is absolutely fantastic. Cannot wait to talk about that one. And uh, I know my guest is absolutely just frothing at the bit <laughs> to get into that one. So it's going to be it's going to be a really good chat. All right. Be a good fella and leave a rating or review on whichever app you're using to listen to the show. And make sure you share it with the rest of your gang on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as GOHpod and at www.gohpod.com. Most of all, make sure you say hello to your little friend for me. Yeah, Oh, oh.